Welcome to No Longer Conformed, my online teaching and preaching ministry. As we continue this, what I have called this whole project, this teaching, video teaching project, a journey through the narrative of the New Testament, I've included three books to give us that journey through the narrative of the New Testament. And that is one of the Gospels. I've chosen, chosen uh, Matthew to be that Gospel. The book of Acts and the Revelation, which gives us the story of the New Testament. Of course, there are the letters as well and uh, the other Gospels. But by choosing one Gospel to uh, follow the the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, and then the book of Acts to see the, the birth and development of the church, and then the revelation to see the uh, end times, the last things to give us the, that journey. And that's why I've uh, called it the journey, uh, a journey through the narrative of the New Testament. We've completed uh, the book of Acts. That's available on YouTube where all of these videos are placed. We've completed the book of Revelation. And now we're swinging back around to the beginning with the uh, book of Matthew. I've titled this study in the book of Matthew, The First Gospel. Uh, pretty simple. Pretty obvious, but that's what I've entitled it, the first, the first gospel, the book of Matthew. In this particular session, this first session, we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 17, an ancestry of mercy. A story that I like to relay was one of, after the Civil War, when the Civil War had ended, someone asked President Lincoln how he would now treat the Southerners after them being defeated in the war. President Lincoln simply replied, I will treat them as if they had never been away. That is the kind of mercy God has shown us. What was God's response to man's rebellion? Just start right there. What was God's response to man's rebellion? Well, it was the cross. Forgiveness. Eternal life. That's the ultimate expression of the Lord's mercy. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, Matthew begins his gospel with a record of Jesus Christ's life. And he begins that record of Jesus Christ's life with the Lord's genealogy. And let's read those verses. In this uh, first chapter, verses 1 through 17. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron. And Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Ammonadab, and Ammonadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam. Rehoboam 
begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotham, Jotham begot Ahaz, and Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh, Manasseh begot Ammon, and Ammon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Shealtiel, and Shealtiel begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Abiud, Abiud begot Eliakim, and Eliakim begot Azor. Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Achim, Achim begot Eliad, Eliad begot Eleazar, Eleazar begot Matan, and Matan begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations from David until the captivity in Babylon of 14 generations and from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. Uh, why pay so much attention to a list of ancestors? Isn't the birth of Jesus the main thing? Well, there are three things the genealogy does in this gospel record. And I want to look at those during this session. Three things that this genealogy does. In looking at this list of ancestors that comes down to Jesus. First of all, the genealogy identifies the focus of the New Testament. The Old Testament begins with the act of creation. The New Testament begins with the one who is the creator. The creator of all things became the savior of all. So the genealogy focuses in what the New Testament is all about. Jesus. The Old Testament focused on the creation. And then the New Testament begins with the one who was the creator. Or who is the creator. And that creator of everything became the savior of everyone. So the genealogy identifies the focus of the New Testament. But second, the genealogy establishes the promise of God. Who would the Messiah be? Well, the Messiah would be the son of David. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with, just, with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The son of Abraham... Those who re read this genealogy, they would clearly understand its implications. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Matthew chapter 22 verses 41, 42 
It says, while the, the Pharisees were gathered, Jesus asked them, saying, what do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, David's. Well, see, there's no doubt what Matthew is establishing here. He's presenting the genealogy of Jesus Christ, who is, in his words, the son of David, the son of Abraham. The son of David, the son of Abraham. The one who the promise came through and the one who would sit on the throne. Jesus Christ. Christ, that means, it literally means anointed. The Messiah. They would understand what Matthew was getting at. He's the Christ, the anointed one. He's the Messiah from David and from Abraham. From Abraham to David, it says, 14 generations. From David to the captivity, it says, 14 generations. And the captivity to Christ, 14 generations. Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So, third thing that this genealogy does is in addition to giving us a focus of Jesus Christ for the New Testament and letting us know who the, uh, the promise, that Jesus is the, 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 the result of the promise, This third, reveal, this, the third thing the genealogy does is it reveals the depth of God's mercy. See, besides Mary, the mother of Jesus, she's there, referred to. There's also four other women who are listed there. It, it really was unnecessary. And it was unusual to list the mothers, these four women. The lineage was completely established without them. It wasn't necessary for them to be there. But let, let me tell you something. This is a, a principle of interpreting scripture. That, listen, God may do things that are unusual, but God does nothing that is unnecessary. A closer look reveals that God didn't waste any ink here at all in adding these four women to this genealogy. So what, who are these four women that the Holy Spirit included in the genealogy of Jesus Christ? Well, first of all, there's Tamar. In verse three, it says, Judah begot Perez and Zerah, by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Tamar's story, we're not going to read the whole story, but Tamar's story is told in Genesis 38, right in the middle of the, the story of uh, Joseph. She was, Tamar was Judah's daughter-in-law, and she was widowed by the death of his son Ur. Well, she was then promised to Judah's son, Shelah, when he was grown. And when Shelah was grown, he was never given to her. And so in order to uh, produce an heir for her husband, her dead husband, Ur, she disguised herself as a prostitute. She seduced Judah, slept with him, became pregnant, and gave birth to a son, Paris. And so this illegitimate son of prostitution was placed in the lineage of Jesus. Wow, that's something. 
Another one of the names there is Rahab. In verse 5, Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. Joshua chapters 5 and 6 records Rahab that she was a Canaanite prostitute. She hid the spies, the Israelite spies in the promised land, and her family was spared when Israel destroyed Jericho. Look at Joshua chapter 6, verses 22 to 25. But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in, brought out Rahab her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. And so they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. But they burned the city and all that was in it, only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab, the harlot, her father's household and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Do you see the, the picture of Christ? Remember the Passover protected by the blood of the lamb if they stayed in the house? Protected by the scarlet cord if they stayed in the house. They had to be in the house there when they came to get her, to spare her before they destroyed the city. Protected by the blood of Jesus Christ if our faith is placed in him. So the blood of the lamb on the door spared the Israelites. Rahab and her family were spared by the red cord as long as they stayed in the house. And if we put our faith in Jesus Christ, his blood spares us, saves us from destruction, just as the Israelites were spared the destroyer and Rahab was spared the destruction of Jericho. We are spared destruction for all of eternity forgiven of our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. So a foreign prostitute requested mercy and was placed in the lineage of Jesus Christ. And then there's Ruth, also in verse 5. It says, Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, and then Obed begot Jesse. The book of Ruth tells us that Ruth was a Moabite, widowed by her Jewish husband's death. She was willing to follow the God of her mother-in-law, Naomi. She was redeemed by Boaz, married him, and gave birth to a son, Obed, who was the father of Jesse, who was the father of David. How significant is this? Well, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 and 4 tell us something. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the 10th generation, none of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord forever because they did not meet you with bread and water on the road when you came out of Egypt and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Baor, from Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse you. So a foreigner, a despised foreigner, was willing to forsake her pagan worship and was mercifully placed in the lineage of Jesus. And then there's Bathsheba, verse 6. And Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. And it's interesting how the genealogy reads here. It's a reminder of that sinful union her who had been the wife of Uriah. I mean, it's there in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. Bathsheba was wife to a general of Israel, one of David's generals. She committed adultery with David, the king. 
the, the, the rendezvous resulted in murder and deception. A sword of judgment came against the house of David. I mean, there was rape, murder, rebellion, death, so much sorrow. But God showed mercy and forgiveness to David. And he placed this adulterous woman in the lineage of Jesus. Think about this. A deceitful daughter-in-law who committed incest and her illegitimate son, a prostitute who asked for mercy, a foreigner willing to forsake idolatry and follow God, and an immoral wife. Listen, God in his great mercy chose to include these four women in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Spiritually speaking, you gotta think about it. Spiritually speaking, we are all immoral and adulterers. We are all foreigners to the kingdom of God. We are all idolatrous worshipers of ourselves, and we are all illegitimate children. And yet God is willing to take us back to himself, acting on our behalf. Romans chapter five, and then again, John three sixteen. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Wow. An ancestry of mercy. And we are the beneficiaries that mercy and that grace through Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary's cross that we might be forgiven and have eternal life. All I can say is in gratefulness, thank you, Lord. You have a great day.